Hello and welcome to AutoInform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey. In this how-to feature, we'd like to take a look at testing of sensors. The particular sensor I've chosen with this vehicle, this is an X-Type Jaguar 2.5, is the map sensor. And I've chosen that for several reasons because one of the, I think, critical processes that we um, use in diagnostics is not to rely on one single source of information. On this vehicle is a good example. The map sensor is integrally fitted to the inlet manifold and by that I mean that the active part of the sensor is in effect inside the plenum chamber. Now the reason I've chosen this particular component is because when you test a sensor that has a potential fault, a DTC or a range error, you have to take into account many options of why that component is faulty. Let, let, let's perhaps take a, a little look at some of the possibilities. It could be the sensor is actually faulty, that its range performance is wrong. It could be that the wiring to the component is wrong. And do remember, they have a DTC, never replace a component until you've checked power and ground. I have, as a preliminary to this filming, checked power and ground to this component. I am currently connected to the output circuit. It could also be an environment issue. Now, environment is the conditions under which it operates. In our case, it's inside an enclosed chamber, a plenum chamber. It's subject to uh, breathing, oil, mist. Um, it's also subject to the actual pressure waves within the plenum chamber. So something like an ignition misfire or an air leak or an unstable idle control device will all affect the reading from this component. So try and think of all options. The tools I've chosen for this particular um, presentation are, and this is in contrast to uh, using an oscilloscope, I also like to show that you can use other tools. I'm not suggesting that the multimeter, the DMM, will replace the performance of an oscilloscope, but it is a valid tool within certain criteria of testing, and I would say that this is one occasion when you would get away with it. So we're going to look at simple voltage. So if I turn the ignition on, you can see that we have an active reading, 2.393 volts. I've also connected a vacuum gauge. This is a gauge that we have specially built for us because I found it very difficult, if not impossible, to get a gauge that was accurate and gave us the option of measuring manifold vacuum and positive pressure, because we also use this for turbo testing, although obviously not in this feature. We have a telltale built in it so that it can record minimum or maximum values. And this is connected also into the plenum chamber at this point here. So I've removed a vacuum line to the brake servo and I'm picking up the actual intake system pressure, although we're dealing with effectively negative pressure. Um, we're, we're dealing with the pressure in the intake system because one of the key requirements is that we qualify what serial data we're getting back. Remember that the serial data is an interpretation of value from the component plus interpretation of the data as received and interpreted by the PCM. That covers an awful lot of things, including the wiring back to the PCM. This gives us the ability to measure it in many ways. Voltage against serial data and what we call real world. Real world, of course, is the gauge. We really do trust these gauges, which is why we use them. So that's the the process in place, what I intend to do now is uh, set the serial tool up for actually monitoring that component, map manifold absolute pressure. We are obviously on a Jaguar, X-Type, what engine information, petrol, I've already looked at the chassis number and it falls within that choice.
checking the data as received back from the ECU, that's fine. And what I'd like to look at is dynamic data in drive, engine control module, petrol engine 2.5 and 3 litre, the VIN number we've already qualified before, and we're looking at the particular piece of data that I require actually comes within engine and emission control. And you can see here I have a number of pieces of information, all of which are important, but the one I'm focusing on just for this demonstration is the manifold absolute pressure sensor, voltage, serially interpreted 2.37, 2.393. I'm happy with that variation. And we're also given an actual theoretical pressure. Now at the moment, we should be at atmosphere, so gauge pressure also is at zero. That could well demonstrate absolute pressure as opposed to gauge pressure. There is one bar difference. We all live in one bar of pressure, so don't make the mistake of the differential often with serial data and actual gauge pressure. My intention now is to start the vehicle up and take a simple observation at idle to see if these three pieces of information cross correlate to each other. Just come back into live data to make sure there wasn't a data lockup on crank start. It's often advisory when doing any diagnostic procedure to support the tool with uh, external power and also support the vehicle with smart power management. I haven't done that in this case because it's a fairly short, simple demonstration. First observation, let's have a look at the real world. We have 18 inches of mercury, which is a good figure. We have a smooth engine, a good reading. The telltale has peaked at around 19 inches of mercury, so I'm fairly happy with the actual value of pressure in the manifold. And the benefit of using the gauge is that this is an undamped gauge. There is no glycerine or oil damped feature in this gauge, deliberately so. Any deviation, any um, uneven pressure, which can be sticky valves, tappets, air leaks, any irregular running, will show up with this gauge. That's why we prefer to use it. Whereas often, with voltage, it's a more stable reading, so we can't rely on voltage. We could, if we were using a oscilloscope, rely on the trace from that scope to determine uneven running. In our case, we're using the gauge, and in, in which case we'd also use the scope and the gauge, should that be the case. I'm happy with the gauge pressure. Voltage, 1.11, and the serial interpretation, 106. So I'm quite happy that the, the information from this component is being accurately reported on all three methods of measurement. So the, the purpose, and I hope the, the, the the message in this presentation is never just rely on serial data or a single avenue of investigation by using different tools, cross-checking the data that give you a much more accurate picture of often what we call cause and symptoms. That concludes the demonstration. It's a very simple demonstration, but I hope it gives you an insight into how we look at components. We don't just rely on DTCs. We look at live data, we check live data with other instruments, we also then look at and consider environment, wiring and all other issues that could cause that DTC. Well, thank you for joining me in this presentation and look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you.